we have just finished breakfast. This is actually the first breakfast we've been able to enjoy at our hostel, even though it was included, just because the breakfast is from 7 a.m. till 9 a.m. and we were always getting a start at about 6. But today is our last day here, so all that's left for us to do is pack up and start driving to our next Costa Rican destination. After a stunning three and a half hour drive, we have now arrived to our accommodation in Monte Verde. Absolutely props to you on all of the driving. Like that was not easy by any stretch of the imagination. There was a lot of twists and turns and you did amazingly well with it. But it's gorgeous. Oh, absolutely. It's a really great drive, but it's not without its challenges at times. And to add one more thing, you were comparing it to our drive in New Zealand. Yes. Where Nick had said that in New Zealand, whatever Google Maps says, double it. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, the Costa Ricans have definitely posted a speed limit that's manageable. So it will actually take you the time that it says on Google Maps. Yeah, very true. In terms of what we've got planned for the rest of today, we don't have a lot on so we are going to call it here for today but we are going to pick this up tomorrow with some exciting plans so we will see you then good morning from monteverde today we are going to do something that excites us both very much because it combines some of our absolute favorite things it turns out costa rica is world renowned for growing the likes of coffee cocoa and also sugarcane and in this part of Costa Rica you can take a tour that encompasses all three in one. So we are going to go and do that this morning. Let's go! To begin our tour at Don Juan we were given an overview on the history of the coffee making world and the differences between the two main bean varieties. Arabica grown in countries such as Costa Rica which is sweeter and lower in caffeine and Robusta which is higher in caffeine but more bitter and is also more widely grown due to higher yields. We were then taken through the coffee making process. We were told that it takes two years for a new coffee plant to bear fruit and the fruit can only be harvested once per year between November and January, at which point they look like small grapes. The fruit is then peeled, washed, dried and shelled to reveal something resembling the coffee beans that we know and love. During these processes, the quality is then determined, with the lower quality beans going more towards instant coffee products and the higher ones going to coffee shops and roasteries. After the shelling process, the beans are still green and have very little flavour while still having a high caffeine content. This makes them perfect for nutritional products and supplements. However, to truly become drinkable coffee, the beans need to be roasted, which can either be done on site or at a coffee roastery. The more the beans are roasted, the less acidic and richer the coffee tastes. Once the roasting process is complete, the beans can be ground and prepared as desired for drinking. Next up, we were introduced to sugarcane. Because of the wetter climate in this part of the world, the concentration of the sugar in the sugarcane in comparison to other countries in the world is lower. The sugarcane is pressed to create juice, which can be consumed on its own, and it is delicious. To then make granulated sugar, the cane juice needs to be boiled to remove the water before being placed into molds. This then hardens into a solid block, which can then be ground into the powdered sugar that we know. In this form, it is brown due to the molasses content. However, for white sugar, it undertakes additional chemical processes that remove the molasses from the juice prior to being dried out and ground. Finally, we were introduced to the chocolate making process. It can take a few years for cacao plants to bear the large pods which contain about 30 to 50 beans, which are white in colour and taste more like lychees or citrus fruits than anything else. 
The beans are then fermented over a few weeks before being dried and then roasted for about five minutes. The roasted beans can be split open for cacao nibs or they can be shelled, pressed and ground to make chocolate. During the pressing and grinding processes, two different products are created, cocoa solids and cocoa butter. The percentage of cocoa solids and butter to milk and sugar determines whether the final product is dark, milk or white chocolate. We got to try both white and dark chocolate as well as some chocolate covered coffee beans, all of which were divine. During the tour, we were also presented with an ancient Aztec recipe, which included pressed and ground cacao, cacao butter, brown sugar, vanilla, cinnamon, and cayenne pepper. We can confirm that without a doubt, it is the best hot chocolate we have ever had. To finish the tour, we were offered all of the different coffee roasts that Don Juan produces to try for ourselves. And now we get to sample some of the coffee. This is called honey coffee. Yeah. This one is a light roast. Yeah, this one is not as smooth as the honey coffee. There is a little bit of bitterness to it, which is interesting because every single cup of coffee we've had here in Costa Rica, one of the things I keep remarking on is that there is no aftertaste, there's no bitterness, so this one is a little bit bitter. Next up, medium roast. Interesting. It seems to have a bit of a richer and more complex flavour than the light roast. I'm not sure if it's as smooth or as sweet as the honey coffee, but certainly it's still very nice. The last one we're trying is the dark roast. I think, other than the honey coffee, this one's my favourite because it's definitely the least acidic. There is no aftertaste. It is so smooth and not at all bitter. So I think I'm a firm dark roaster, but when I was smelling the beans, I liked the smell of the light roast and the medium roast the best. So it tells you it doesn't always translate to when the coffee's made. The final one we're going to try is called green coffee. This is basically just taking the beans, not roasting them at all, and just putting them into a drink. It looks a lot more like a tea, and it kind of smells like it a little bit as well. Intrigued to see it. Yeah, honestly, there really isn't any real flavor to it, but it's refreshing. What a fabulous tour. That cost 38 US dollars per person and it was a good two hours long. So I just think it was so well worth the money because we really were able to learn about the growing process, how things were harvested and then processed. And that was for the coffee, the sugar cane, and the chocolate. I feel like you and I are kind of coffee snobs anyway, but I am even more of a coffee snob now because I now can say for certain that I like the Arabica bean the best. It seems to be like a really good quality compared to the Robusta. And then I know that I like a dark roast. I think it's always really good when you can taste things back to back it's easier to compare and contrast. And I just think if you like chocolate or coffee, also sugarcane, this is just a fantastic tour to do. You just learn so much and yeah, really enjoyed it. Yeah, me too. I think it's always interesting when you get to come to places like this to see exactly how all of this stuff is made. I think that was a sensation that I first felt when we went to Sri Lanka in particular. When we went to the tea fields and we went to the tea factories and we saw the process behind what then goes into the tea bags that we see at every supermarket. And it's basically the same thing, really. We've been enjoying coffee for quite some time. Same thing with the chocolate and everything like that. I guess I've never really been able to fully appreciate where it comes from, how important it is to figure out the origins, how 
the quality of the soil and mm -hmm. everything like that then affects the quality of the end product and all of that kind of stuff and it seems like that is uniform for most of the things that we eat and drink across the board so yeah absolutely fascinating to learn about really really cool to try all the free samples as well which mm -hmm. you definitely can't argue with was that your favorite part I mean, it, it helped everything along. Um, <laughs> I think my favorite of the samples, though, was the um, Aztec made chocolate. That oh, was, the hot oh, chocolate, my, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, yes. My, it had vanilla, cinnamon, a little bit of chili in there. It was divine. I can completely understand why the Aztecs and mines loved it so much. I would happily drink that every day. Oh, same. My God. I would get very fat, but it would be beautiful. Like that for dessert after dinner and then coffee done right to start your morning. Oh, yeah. Like, idyllic. It's the dream. It's the dream. The other really, really cool thing was the fact that they weren't just growing the coffee, the chocolate, and the sugar cane, but they were growing a whole host of other things. A variety of different fruits and even nuts that I didn't anticipate when because generally speaking, when you go to a like a specific plantation or anything like that, then it's just like, okay, we only grow this one thing. You're not expecting to see anything else. But I guess by seeing everything else, then it gave me a real appreciation for all of the other amazing things that you can enjoy locally here in Costa Rica as well. So all in all, a very, very good way to spend a couple of hours. I would recommend this to anybody who's coming around these parts. Yeah, I think when we do these tours in various countries and see the locally grown product, it really reinforces to me how important it is to eat locally, seasonally, and keep everything as natural as possible. And it really encourages me to do the same in everyday life, Absolutely. even if it's more expensive. <laughs> yes. That is all that we have planned for today, but that is not bringing our time in Monteverde to an end just yet. What we have tomorrow is equally as exciting, and so we're going to bring you along for that. Until next time, though, take care. And keep smiling. <laughs> Thank you.